Okay. Right, circuit analysis. It's a little bit of a, um, I call it circuit analysis because it's basically what you're doing, but full circuit analysis really takes a, is a lot more to it than uh, what I can really show you in, in a dozen slides. Um, just a brief introduction in the methods and me methodology of simple analysis. This is a foundation level course, uh, specifically to try and help foundation license holders. So I have been asked by a few, uh, getting a better grasp of Ohm's law and the mathematics behind it. If you don't understand Ohm's law and you don't grasp that, you're not going to grasp anything else about electrics, electronics, electrical theory, anything. It is the, it is the most important formula and concepts that you could ever really you need to get into. Methods of analysis. Um, in many ways to analyze the circuit, two most common types is mesh, mesh analysis and nodal analysis. Uh, all, the other, all the other methods such as, um, as Thevenin, uh, Thevenin uh, superposition, they all rely, come back onto these two um, methods. Um, for starters, uh, we won't be dealing with resistors, light bulbs, LEDs and DC voltage sources. This can be expanded to include other passive components such as capacitors and inductors, as well as active components such as transistors, but I'm not going to, that would be a long, a long way down the track. Um, <laughs> Cole, in his, in, 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 in his humour, I didn't put this, no, at part one of 100, the rest is on disc, paper's too heavy. <laughs> Thank you, Cole. Um, a good textbook on electrical theory is a must-have in any book collection. If you want to do anything, even if you want to go, just go up to standard level. Um, you don't need to spend a lot of money. You could probably there'd probably be uh, several several available in this club, um, even from the 1960s. A book from the 1960s would be perfectly good, and no better than a book that was written last week. Um, the theories that we're using, the principles, and all the laws are a lot older than any of these books. Um, most of my information uh, these are old textbooks I had when I went to uni. Uh, there's one very good one. Fundamentals of Electric Circuits. Um, when it says fundamentals, uh, fundamentals, you really got to take that with a grain of salt. Um, I mean, you take that with a real grain of salt. There's a lot more than that. And um, this one, which would probably scare most of you, is Modern Engineering Mathematics. Um, they're about the only two books that I really need to use. With those two books, uh, you could design a supercomputer if you had the brains. Um, I am sorry to say that mathematics and electrical theory are totally inseparable. You can't do it without it. No, I, I know a lot of people don't like maths. I don't understand why people don't like maths. It's because fascinating. They don't understand it. That's why. And all that. But if you're going to get into any electronics, you you just need to know it. You can't do it without it. Mesh analysis. What is a mesh? Mesh is simply a, bound, a closed boundary within a circuit. Um, simple circuit here, there's three meshes. No, they're, just they're just boundaries. Um, usually there'll always be a voltage source, there'll be a current source, there can be any, any sort of inductors, capacitors, coils, there could even be uh, uh, active components such as certain lyses, transistors, diodes. But that's, that's, what, that's what a mesh is. A mesh is just a boundary. No, there might be, um, in, in some of the larger circuits, there could be anything up to three or 4,000 meshes, no, depending on the large size of the circuit. What is a node? Same drawing. A node is a branch with three or more connections within a circuit. The same illustration shows the same circuit with nodes N1 to N4. You've got a node here, here, here and here. There you know, they're your branches. Mesh analysis. For this lecture we'll mainly be taking a look at mesh and node analysis, but first we must touch on some laws we need to use to make this work. Ohm's law. This is the mathematics behind it all. However, it needs to be used in conjunction with Kirchhoff's laws below to be of any practical use. 
uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. Ohm's law, I'm sure everybody here would have seen this. Um, takes one volt to push one amp through a resistance of one ohm. Um, just a brief recap, I've made this so you see the equations you want. You want your resistance, just voltage divided by amps, I times R, etc. Um, and there's some of your formulas. There are a lot more formulas than what's here. If I really wanted to, I could have filled up a page with all different formulas. If you look on Google uh, at electrical formulas, you can find a big wheel and they're quite good. I've got one printed out on my wall and it's got all these calculations. It just gives a, it's just a, a formula wheel. They're quite handy. Um, Kirchhoff's voltage law. Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the algebraic sum of all voltage drops and rises in a closed loop equals zero. Um, don't be scared by the word algebraic. I'm not going to scare you that much. Um, now, voltage drops and rises. A voltage rise will be from a power source, such as a battery power supply. Power supply. A voltage drop is what you get from any passive component. Um, if it was a transistor that's got gain, it won't necessarily be a voltage drop. It'll be a voltage gain. So in, with this, Vs, 10 volt, Vs around in a loop, Vs minus V1, minus V2, minus V3 will always equal zero. Um, and if it doesn't end up zero and you're measuring your circuit, this is where the anal analyzing comes into it something's wrong. You've analysed that something's wrong, something doesn't work out. This is where the mathematics come into it, because if the mathematics says you can't do it, you can't do it. You can only ever do something if mathematics says you can. Mark, would you mind if I made a comment? You can make anything all you want. Just be careful with your voltmeter if you go measuring that, because your voltmeter will load the circuit. And oh one, well, it will. Tell, it, will, it, tell, will it, it will tell you lies. But I'm, I'm, I'm only working here with um, a perfect voltmeter. Perfect, yeah, perfect voltmeters, um, perfect resistors, um, perfect, perfect, perfect <laughs> conductors, and all that. In other words, I'm working with things that don't truly exist. Yeah, but I thought I'd better mention this because somebody. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now, we'll just simple analysing of this circuit. As I said before, Vs minus V1 minus V2 minus V3 equals zero. Um, V1, voltage one, that's a voltage over resistor one, equals uh, current times resistor one. The current over your total, I really haven't set this out in the right order, but the current is your Vs, o, Vs divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3. In other words, your voltage, voltage divided by your total resistance, they're in series, gives you your current, which is 10 volt divided by 6 ohm, 1.66 amps. Um, V1 will be uh, current times R1 is 1.6, six times one. So your voltage there will be 166 volts. Uh, voltage, uh, voltage two on resistor two is 1.66 amps times two ohms. I did have it uh, on another one. I had the actual uh, values. So another thing I forgot, sorry. Um, that's a one ohm, two ohm, three ohm, by the way. I didn't have it up there. Um, but it's a 2 ohm. The voltage over that will be 1.66 times 2. Gives a voltage of 3.32 volts. Uh, R3 is a 3 ohm, will be 166 amps times 3 ohms, 4.9 volts. Uh, V1, equ V1 equals V2 plus V3 equals Vs. So, but you add them all up, 1.66 plus 3.32 plus 4.98 comes to 9.96, that's just rounding errors, it's 10 volt. That's what I mean, all the voltage have to add up to zero. Once they add up to zero... There's an error in your formula yeah. there. Yep. 
There is. V1, plus V2. Oh, that one here. Yeah. I have two. Actually, I thought that was a little bit. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, oh, that's why I gave it to Cole before to read it. But Did I glance through it. And yeah. yeah, you just glance through. But I'm sure you you get the. That's just a basic uh, analysis of a mesh. A node. Mesh, a node on the direction used in mesh analysis. Uh, a positive to negative direction is generally always used <coughs> and is, it's meant to be unofficial, but it's an unofficial standard you'll find in every textbook, uh, including the one I've got here. Um, you'll, always, you'll, you'll see this circle a lot, that just gives it in direction. Sometimes you don't see it, sometimes I don't even put them in. Um, it doesn't make any difference difference which direction you do your loops. The actual direction of DC current flow is negative to positive. Um, electron flow. Electron flow. <laughs> current flow. It's all is actually negative to positive. But this wasn't discovered until actually quite recently, long before any of these. And when they uh, when all these theories were uh, um, uh, discovered, etc. They had a 50% chance of getting it right, and they didn't. No, right. But from a mathematical point of view, it doesn't matter what. doesn't matter what your direction you go in, it'll, the answer will always be the same. Um, I can't think of anything apart from, believe it or not, actually welding where the electron flow direction makes any difference. Uh, in welding it does because two-thirds of your welding heat will always be on your positive. So if you've got your positive on your metal or on your rod, it makes a big difference. Um, that's the only, only application I can think that actual the your, your, your electron flow direction is visible and you really really notice it. Um, yeah, the direction of DC current flow was not truly known until long after many textbooks were written. However, for any circuit analysis, it makes no direction. Uh, you do the math and it all works out the same. Node analysis. Node analysis states that the algebraic sum of all currents into and out of a node equals zero. In other words, this is a typical circuit node. There could be anything coming off. You've got current going in, you've got current going out, you've got current going out. I minus I1 minus I2 equals zero. Um, if it doesn't, then you've got something wrong, or you're measuring it wrong. There are no magical formulas for these laws, for Kirchhoff's voltage law or current. There's no formulas as such associated with them, like Ohm's law. Uh, all they do is make use of the, uh, a simple law of en uh, physics that um, matter and energy can neither be created nor destroyed. You can only change its form. No, we can use a battery that converts a chemical reaction into electrical action. You could use a generator, which is mechanical, converts mechanical action, mechanical energy into electrical energy, etc. That's all we can do. Okay, a simple circuit. Um, I'm sure a lot of you would know exactly what it is. Um, and. Uh, I'm sure many, probably everybody here has played around with an LED at one stage. Um, LED circuit dropping resistor calculation. Um, it's really, uh, the formula can be written out a lot simpler than that. I should have put it up there. I believe the, I believe the diode's back to front. Hey? I believe the diode's back to front. Because it's the reverse, it's the reverse voltage across the diode. No, 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 that's right. Is that a, a lead has current in the forward direction? Uh, that's anode. Anode, cathode. We've got to get current to flow through it. We're not trying All to right. no, but, but it's um, current flows in reverse as we've from, seen From a mathematical point of view, it makes no difference. <laughs> um, it only makes a difference when it's in line in the circuit and it's not working again. <laughs> that's, that's a good way of putting it. Um, mathematically, it makes no difference anyway. Um, 
LED, we've got the LED specifications. Um, has a forward current of 30 milliamp, it's 0 0.03 amps. A forward voltage of three volts, because that's, that's their specifications. Applying KVL, Kirchhoff's voltage law, VS minus V1 minus V2 equals zero. We already know what VS is, that's 20 volt. We know what V1 is, that's the voltage across the diode, it's gotta be three volt. So V2 across the resistor equals VS minus V1, all right? which equals 17 volts. So we need 17 volts across that resistor to get the three volts drop across the, the di uh, LED to run it properly. Um, we already know what our current's got to be, 0 0.03 amps. Um, so R1, v, uh, um, R1 equals V2 divided by, I think that should have been V1 actually. Uh, no, R1, sorry, is v, uh, V2 divided by the current, which equals 17, divided by 0 0.03 amps, means the dropping resistor is 566.6 ohm. Whether you'd actually get one exactly that value, I don't know, but um, it usually doesn't matter. This can also be written in a, in a much simpler way, that uh, it's just VS, VS minus VLED divided by the current. That's all you need to do. But all that formula does is that's that's just a simple example of um, Kirchhoff's voltage laws. Just making sure all your voltages add up to zero. Um, that's good because I've always wondered how I do that because I want to put LEDs in certain radios I've got at home and I'm never new to mathematics. So actually doing the breakdown for someone who doesn't understand it is actually quite good. It's it, once you, once you, it's actually very simple when you get your, get your head around it. Yeah, well, I and I, I'm, now, like, you know, when I first started out, I had no idea and all this sort of mathematics had had me stuffed. All right. But the actual... It, it's actually quite easy to understand. And the actual formula... Sorry, Cole. Oh, I'm shocked. Oh. Oh. Did you wipe your blackboard down? Yes. Oh, sorry, whiteboard. <laughs> whiteboard. All right. But the um, the actual the actual formula <coughs> that you can use instead of having to do all that, you just um, um, for resistor for resistor drop. Could you use another marker pen? Yeah. This, Turn the light on. I don't know if any of these. Is that, a, is that a whiteboard marker or a permanent marker? I don't know. Thanks, Steve. That's all right. All right. Can you see that? Yep. Sure. Don't have a light on the down the right inside. Oh, yeah. Oh. All right. The easiest way to put that, that formula for calculating your, your um, dropping resistors is just your um, resistor, resistor drop uh, equals just Vs, that's your power supply, uh, minus your voltage LED that you get from manufacturer specs. That'll give you your forward voltage divided by I the current LED. That's the current drain of the LED. Alright, so like here, that's according to specifications. I don't know if it's actually any real ID, that's just pretty common. Actually that's pretty close to the LEDs. I yeah, think. it's pretty common, but the LEDs vary so much now. It's so much more powerful. And that's just just how that how that formula works. I mainly put this in there because I know a lot of people do a lot with LEDs. Um, so you get nearly everything's LEDs now. And I know a lot of people don't understand the dropping resistor value. Um, so it's easy, that, a simple formula like, like that, just it does exactly the same thing as that. Well, I've been trying to work out how to do it, reading, still haven't found anything. That makes it easy. Yeah. So now I understand it. Um, and it doesn't matter what, what voltage, um, 
And it's one of the it's one of the few things too. It doesn't make great deal of difference whether it's AC or DC. Um, uh, one of the very few things, really, that doesn't make a great deal of difference. Um, now, a real a bit a bit more of a um, a bit more of a challenge here. Um, a bit of a design idea, and I was toying around. Excuse me. I feel like I'm having to be. I was toying around with this as a uh, project for the club. Um, can anybody tell me what that circuit possibly is? Oh, it's up there anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Most people have got notes anyway. All right, design idea. Advanced licensee, legal power limit dummy load. We're allowed 400 watts. Um, available power resistors are 50 ohm and rated at 250 watts. They're available all over the internet now. You see them there, the little chip resistors. Um, get them for about seven bucks each. And all that. Um, you want to make a power, we need to make a dummy load that can absorb 500 watts. 400 watts. 1200 watts. Right. <laughs> I wasn't looking at Bob. Somebody else is going to outdo Bob, I reckon. No. All right. But anyway, we've got four. We've got four fifty-ohm resistors. Um. Now, most of you would uh, know um, resistors, how to, do, how to calculate your resistors in parallel, I'm assuming, and resistors in series. Um, R total, what I've done first, R total, R total is R1 plus R2 in parallel with R3, R4. Um, that's just my note. I don't know if that's official notation or what, but that's what I used while I was at uni and everything. Just means they're in parallel, uh, which equals 50 plus 50 in parallel with 50 plus 50, which is uh, 100 times 100 divided by 100 plus 100, which brings us back to our 50 ohm, which is what we want for a dummy load. Um, now, applying KCL. Um, at M1, which is here, we get I equals uh, I, I, which is the main current, minus I1 minus I2 equals zero. Power is 400 watt, and our resistance total is 50 ohm. Um, the supply here is uh, not in, it's in watts, because we measure our transmitter out in watts, not volts. So we're pumping 400 watts power in, First of all, we need to know all our currents. We need to know all that. Um, the current will be the square root. Now, this is, I'm sorry I had to put this symbol in. I know a lot of you don't want to want to see a square root symbol, but it's unavoidable. I equals the square root of power over resistance, or if you really want it, um, uh, power, power, uh, square root by power divide. It's, uh, Forget about it, I'm getting twisted. But anyway, the current equals square root of 400 divided by 50. Our total current is 2.8 amps. Uh, that's at 400 watts. We're putting out 2.8 amps of RF current into a 50, assuming you're going into a 50 ohm load. Um, I1 up there, I2. The, v, uh, the VS, the, the voltage that we've actually got, we get from um, current times resistance total, which is 2.8 times 50, which is 140 volts. So that's, you. Um, I'm sure a few of you have had uh, RF burns from every now and then. Oh, Karen never had an RF burn. <laughs> oh, that. 
I've had a few. I've, I've, I've got a tune. I've got an antenna tuner at home that's notorious for it. <laughs> My maths says that you'd only be two amps. No, uh, uh, 100 ohms. Fifty. So you've got two hundred watts. Hundred ohms is two amps. Fifty. We're four hundred watts into so you've got fifty ohms. Watts into two lots of fifty. hundred ohms. So you got two hundred watts in each hundred ohms lot. 200 watts in 50, and 100 ohms is 2 amps. Alright. Um, I'm not sure exactly. Well, I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> um, You're doing everything backwards. No, right. we've got 400. We've got 400. We've got 400 watts. Yeah. Right. 200 watts in each resistor string. Alright. 100 ohms. 200, 200, 200 watts. 100 ohms is 2 amps. Alright. You'll get um, uh, resistance total. First of all, look at resistance total. Yeah. Right, that's 50 ohm. Yeah. Right, um, 400 watts. Your current is power square root power divided by resistance. Yeah. Right. I'll do the calculation again, just <laughs> in case I have I have made a um, nice a boo boo. <laughs> I didn't I didn't bring my calculator. Who else got there? Oh, yeah, he's got his calculator. <laughs> Give me the. The square root of eight is going to be less than three. All right. Two point eight two amps. <laughs> so we. You you put hundred watt, two hundred watts through hundred ohms. Yeah, but I'm not going through. I'm not putting two hundred through hundred ohms. Yes, you are. All right. You got two fifty amps in series. All right. Which is hundred ohms. Another two hundred, another hundred in parallel. You're putting four hundred watts in, so each each string is going to take two hundred watts. All right. Two hundred watts and cross hundred ohms is still two amps for me. Uh, still. If I put a lead in there, I could expect. Well, it doesn't. I think I know where you're coming on, but uh, it doesn't actually. It, it truly doesn't work that way. You got to look at your resistance total, yeah. and your resistance total is 50 ohms, yeah. and 400 watts into a 50 ohm load yeah. equals 2.82 amps. That's the that's the mathematics that works out. It has to work out that way. No. Now this is where nodal analysis. You got two 2.8 amps come up here, but you got I1, I2. 1.4 amps going each side, right, going through 100 ohms, <coughs> right? Um, it's 140 well, your power is, you're, you're confusing me now, Don. You really are confusing me. No, no, right. no. <laughs> actually, I think you're confusing yourself. No, I'm not. No, right. um, so I, I2 and I1 will... I, I1 equals Vs divided by R1 plus R2. That's 140 volts divided by 50 plus 50. Your voltage, Vs, your Vs equals I times RT. Current times resistance total. Right? You've got 2.8 amps times 50 ohms equals 140 volts. That's where your voltage comes into it. Right? 140 volts. Um, I1 is Vs divided by R1 plus R2, right? Which is 140 divided by 50 plus 50 equals 1.4 amps. I didn't do that again because the other leg's the same. Still don't believe it. It's the same. <laughs> so you end up, each leg here, 1.4 amps, which I, current total, 2.8 amps, which brings us back to our original. And RMS Right. <laughs> power dissipation power dissipation per resistor all right because this is a our, our, our resistors are only rate 250 watts um, power equals vs times i1 i'm just going on one leg for this example which is 140 times 1.4 
equals 196 watts. We've got 190, there's rounding errors there, it should be around 200. I haven't gone to three or four decimal points. That's for two resistors though, not one. Huh? That's not per resistor, that's per pair of resistors. No, that's per resistor. That's one plus no, two. well, it's 200, it's 200 watts going through there. It's the current. You might as well take that as one resistor. It's got 200. Yeah, 70 volts per across resistor. each resistor. No, uh, yep. the, well, not necessarily, because you, you, your voltage would be across there. You, might as well, you really should, that, that's only one resistor. Across each resistor, yeah. if you've got each one marked as 50 ohms. Yeah. So if they're truly 50 ohms, it's so 70 across each one. There's, there's 200, 200 watts per dissipation per resistor. Yeah. So you're still within your 250 watt. Um, if you wanted to make a uh, 1,000 watt dummy load, you'd need four of these. And each one of these resistors would end up being one of these circuits. Well, it right. ohm, well, it would be because you'd be 50, because that's, that, that lumps is 50 ohm. Yeah. That lumps is 50 ohm, and then you put them, you know, you put two of these circuits in series and then put two of them in parallel, you're going to be back to 50 ohm. But always, doesn't matter, it's always, uh, it's, a, it's, it's always a hassle financially because, oh yeah, I can double the power of this, but oh no, it's going to, it's four times the cost. <laughs> and all that. Um, you and my next point, so a question mark, um, I agree with your map so far. Uh, the cool. resistors that you order on the web, they uh, rated it. Uh, oh, apologies. 250. Rated it 250. 250. Yeah. Okay. yeah, they're the same there, same there for about $7. Is that 250 continuous? Yes. Yeah, the right heat sink. You've got to put them on a big heat sink. Yeah, 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 yeah you do. These are pretty serious heat sinking. Yeah. I've actually seen um, 800 watts. Physically, how big are they physically? Small. <laughs> They're about three centimetres long by about a centimetre wide, probably about we'll half a mil high. Heat sink. In this case, the heat sink would have to take away 400 watts. Yeah, yeah well, you want to, uh, you, 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 if, if you're not going through any fan cooling or anything like that, you want to be. You want a heatsink rating of at least. Well, you don't want it to get much hotter than around 50, 60 degrees. Mm. Once you start getting up to 80 degrees, electronic components start breaking down. The silicon breaks down at 80 degrees. David. The power resistors you are referring to on the internet are they? Are they those goldy coloured ones on eBay? Oh. You've got to get RF resistors. I, sorts of resistors, you have to get RF rated yeah. They're actual. They're actually called termination resistors. Uh, microwave termination resistors. Less than half an inch square, stuck yeah. on a substrate, so it's a bulk down to the heat sink. Yeah. A little tan, sticking out of the bottle. They'll tell you the they'll frequency they'll go up to. They're, they're quite good, they're quite good. Even a single one, even a single one in a uh, little jiffy box, aluminium jiffy box, with a heat sink on it, makes a good dummy load for nearly any use. Oh, I'm in need of a dummy load, so I'm yeah, and all that. RF dummy load, and you'll find all sorts of stuff. <laughs> yeah, and termination resistors. Like I said, I've seen those. I've seen those resistors on eBay for like seven dollars. So. Yeah, they're stacked out of the Less. Uh, less. All right. I've got one for two fifty watts. At about two bucks or something like. Yeah, that. there's also fifty watt ones, hundred watt ones. I've even seen um, hundred ohm, hundred fifty ohm. Even though you don't see many. But um, uh, I wish I could because it would cut the amount of components down. Mm. Um, um, and the, 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 the other day I found a couple of um, 800 watt no, single, single resistors, 800 watt, 50 ohm. They were about 30 odd dollars or something like that. Couldn't find new ones, only used. But um, you want a, you want a fairly, you would want a fairly hefty heatsink to bolt them down to though, that sort of power. Heat sinks are rated at Celsius per watt. If you don't want it to get it any more than 60 continuous, you, you want a heat sink of, what's that, about 0.2 Celsius watt rating, something like that. That ends up being a very big and bulky um, heat sink. No, and heat sinks don't come cheap, unfortunately. I wonder how, how it would work with uh, water cooling or something like that. Oh, it would probably work fine. And all right. even just bolting on a computer water cooler. Right. Probably work. Yeah, well, I don't know, they're pretty small, but my computer's all water-cooled and it's 
they'd be a bit small really the little riser but then again the chips aren't there that very big the six gallon oil can put a connector on it put your resistor in it and fill it with oil yeah it's usually uh paraffin i think well, they used to use a deadly oil like them transformers oh yeah that's yeah, that's uh very po very poisonous from what i've heard <coughs> but apparently you can use uh paraffin Paraffin. I've never opened it up. It's still you do it. You, you can do it with. Uh, 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 you you can cool your um, your air capacitors down that way too. You can put the capacitor in the oil, vegetable oil. I think you can use. Vegetable oil. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, anyway, this would be this is uh, maybe a project that we could probably do here. I've thought of thinking about dummy loads. Everybody needs a dummy load. Actually, we're going to have to go, we may have to go higher if uh, the WIA's new law goes through and we might get a kilowatt. <laughs> <laughs> have you done your compliance? <laughs> <laughs> do, I, do I look compliant? Well, All right. you'll lose your you, you, Are you taking your medication today? Appreciate <laughs> <laughs> your respect for this. Huh? All right. Oh, yeah. uh, Mark. Oh. I've got a question in respect to that. That was based on your output being 250 watts. 400. Okay. Let's say, for instance, we have a radio that's only going to put out for about 50 watts. Yeah, now, if we have one that's at um, that rate that you had and you use it for the lower power, what differences would you lose and what losses would you have? None. None at all. Just so just less power. No. You're just power. not going to make the resistors as hot. Yeah, at all. Do you get frequency differential or no. other? No. No. Nah. Um, not really. No, 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 not really, no. It's only, only power. Of course, some, it, it can make a difference uh, uh, with, some, with some components as they get hotter. Most materials, as they get hotter, they, they're poorer conductors. So uh, if you get a, um, a resistor that might be running right on its limit, and it's at 80, 90 degrees, it might have a higher impedance, which will throw things out because it's gotten hot. Uh, copper, for instance, uh, the hotter copper gets, the more resistance it is, the, less, the worse conductor it is. So, so I was looking at, so if you design a particular thing, say a commercial aspect, to operate at a, at a particular output, output mortgage, and you're running it less, you're outside that design parameter? No, it doesn't. It's, it's only a maximum. It's not a recommended range of working. It's only a rated maximum. Um, the dummy, that dummy load would be just as accurate at one watt as it would be at 200. It's like having 100 or, horsepower. Or four. Yeah. <laughs> and all that. Well, that's it. And you're only going to be ever using... As a non-radiating antenna. An antenna, wherever you put... One watt into it, <coughs> or as long as it's rated to 1500 watts, it doesn't change anything across it. So, like my, my antenna I'm using at home, it's, it's rated for 1500 watts, but I'm using it at 100 watts, and the, VSWR, uh, the VSWR doesn't change. Well, well, when you're well, all that dummy load that is doing is putting the load on the finals of the radio without the RF being transmitted. That's correct. Hmm. That's well, the, it won't. It doesn't really. The idea of a dummy load is it puts the ideal resistance. Your, S, your, your SWR is only your impedance. No, mm -hmm. right. um, if you pre you present a perfect 50 ohm load to your transceiver, then your SWR is going to be um, right down. It's only a matter of measuring up that. Um, if, you're in, if, you, if you've got a resistor that's faulty, well, your impedance is going to be all wrong, and yeah, that's going to cause problems. Um, not all, even though all the transceivers that we'd ever deal with are all designed for 50 ohm, not all transceivers are. Um, some of the, I have seen some of the older commercial stuff that might add 75 ohm, 100 ohm. Um, um, I've seen some industrial, some industrial um, radio equipment that had 20, 23 ohms, something like that, antenna impedance. Um, why, I don't know. I've got no idea, but... 
a lot of early German stuff was 60 ohms, would you believe that? 60 ohm, yeah. 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 The test here at home with 60 ohm impedance. That's an odd one, one, isn't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, all that heat stuff is 75. Why, huh? I didn't get the and the TV stuff is generally 75. Um, again, in Germany, 60 ohm just after when they started their service up. But impedance is a funny thing anyway because it changes with your frequency. Oh, yeah. so. oh, right. Any other questions on that? Because I've talked long enough. <laughs> That's the end of part oh, one. Just, just back to that. No, oh, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> I won't go to the end. Yes. I thought we'd finish with it, mate. No, no. <laughs> see, the, you, you put it in your calculator and it calculates and you don't see what the process is. But if you divide 50 into 400, that equals 8. So you're really looking at the, the root of 8. The square root of 8. The square root of 8, that's right. Which is going to be a little less than 3. So I'm just saying, yeah. there's really another process in there. Oh, there's a lot. Um, there, no, there's it's, a, it's a calculation. You do the 50 into 400 before the, you do square there's root. There's probably another dozen ways you could calculate all that. There's, there's, nothing, there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Yeah. That's, that's, that's just a confused No, idea. I didn't yeah. say it was wrong. I just, no, no, for, I'm just, for people that are just learning, oh, yeah. they're trying to figure out... Mm. How'd you get 2.8 from 50 into 400 or the square root of it? Like, well, the square, 50, 50 into I 400 I should have um, explained this a little bit more. These are your known values that we know. They're right, your power 400, we've got resistance total of 50 ohm. I sort of now, I should have, I really should have uh, explained the math here a bit more. We know um, you got your power, power equals um, R times I squared, right? So change of, a, cha a, cha a change of subject, we can go um, I, I squared equals, because it was time to reverse, power divided by R which equals square root of power divided Sorry, by I equals square root. All right. You can't have I squared equals a square root. All right. So we have got <laughs> I squared down the next line, right I. I Where? By itself. No, no, the oh. second one. Yeah. There, I. yeah. Oh, I. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, I. So I equals square root. That's, I, that's all I didn't explain. <laughs> I didn't explain. No, I, 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 I wasn't trying to spread yeah. hairs or anything on it. I was just saying to show the, pe the others yeah. the process that you, you went through. That's, oh, it's, that's what I mean with when you start to get it in this, you, you really, you, you nearly all, almost need to include a math lesson. Yeah. And I, I got told by several people not to do that. <laughs> you can't do it. <laughs> all right. I'm sorry to go back to what I said right at the beginning of your lecture. A lead has two parameters. Actually, yes, it has two voltage parameters. One is the forward conduction, which is 0.7 of, or 0.65 of a volt. No, 25 no, seconds. No. The hang forward. On, hang on, hang no, on, hang on. No, I won't. Hang on. Let me finish. The forward voltage of an LED is 0.65 of a volt. The reverse voltage is the voltage which was, I think on that particular one, was 3 volts. It is the reverse voltage which causes the thing to emit no, photons. I'm sorry, you're wrong. No, I'm not. You're getting, now you, wait a minute, you're getting into the, the, actual, the actual workings of that.